House Deputy Speaker and one Sagip Representative Rodante Marcoleta tries to disprove the Filipino citizenship of ABS-CBN Chairman Emeritus Gabby Lopez on Monday, June 8, by asking Lopez to recite the first line of the patriotic oath of the Philippines. Ganito na lamang po, para siguro matapos tayo sa issue ng allegiance. Mawalang galang na po, Mr. Lopez. Pwede ba naming hilingin sa inyo na i-recite ninyo yung unang linya ng panatang makabayan? Iniibig ko ang Pilipinas. Uh, salamat po, Mr. Speaker. Just before Lopez answered, Marcoleta even quips, perhaps Deputy Minority Leader and Bayan Muna Representative Carlos Zarate should help Lopez. After an exchange with Zarate, Marcoleta then manifests Lopez's lawyer coached him when he recited the Panata Makabayan's first line. Twitter users lash out at Marcoleta's antics. User James Lau calls the congressman a joke. Another Twitter user says, following Marcoleta's logic, lawmakers should be asked if they know the 1987 Constitution's preamble by heart. Lopez already addressed in a previous House hearing the issue regarding his citizenship. He said he never announced his Filipino citizenship nor took the U.S. Pledge of Allegiance. The Department of Justice even asserted Lopez is a Filipino citizen since birth. Student groups flagged several blank and duplicate Facebook accounts bearing the usernames of several University of the Philippines students and alumni Sunday, June 7. This was first reported by Tugani, the official student publication of UP Cebu. First to be spotted were duplicate accounts of the activists arrested during an anti-terrorism bill protest on Friday, June 5. It was later discovered that the dummy accounts were not limited to Cebu students. Students and even alumni of different UP campuses also reported duplicate accounts bearing their names. After a few hours, many non-activist accounts also reported duplicates. The UP Office of the Student Regent suspects these dummy accounts are meant to spread false information online. Facebook on Sunday, June 7, says it is investigating the reports of dummy profiles created on its platform. It also urges users to continue reporting any accounts they believe may be inauthentic. The cybercrime offices of the Department of Justice and the Department of National Defense are also looking into the incident. Meantime, lawmakers warn these duplicate accounts can be used to plant evidence against real personalities critical of the Duterte administration. Senator Francis Pangilinan says planted bogus evidence can implicate critics and crimes outlined in the recently passed anti-terror bill. Bayan Muna Representative Carlos Zarate also questions whether the creation of fake Facebook accounts is a prelude to a crackdown on the set. Actress Angel Loxin calls out Senate President Tito Soto for liking a tweet accusing her of being pro-NPA since day one. Soto liked the tweet from user at Boy Cape. A person's likes on Twitter are visible to the public through the likes tab on a person's profile. Loxin tells Soto, I will never support terrorists, nor will I ever support any kind of violence. You have the right to like any tweet, and we have the right to voice out our opinions. I hope we don't get tagged as terrorists for doing so. The former Darna actress helped raise funds to feed and shelter patients and medical and security frontliners. She is now sharing an initiative with fellow actress Anne Curtis to raise funds to purchase coronavirus test kits. Soto is a principal author of the anti-terrorism bill and claims terrorists or their supporters are the only ones who will be afraid of the bill. In Cebu City, eight individuals arrested at an anti-terror bill rally near the University of the Philippine Cebu are released without bail Monday afternoon. The group includes seven activists who were demonstrating against the recently passed anti-terror bill and one bystander taking video of the protesters. Activists criticized the police in full battle gear who manhandled participants of the rally of less than 40 people. Meantime, 72-year-old jeepney driver Elmer Cordero, arrested last June 2 for participating in a rally, remains in jail, while four of the six protesting jeepney drivers are freed on Monday, June 8 after posting bail. The six drivers, including Cordero, were arrested for allegedly failing to practice physical distancing during a protest and supposedly resisting authorities. After six days in jail, the drivers were able to post bail worth 3,000 pesos each, but Cordero and Wilson Ramilia remain in jail. The police say there were other charges filed under their name. The Department of Education says face-to-face -face classes will be postponed until a COVID-19 vaccine is available. Education Secretary Leonor Briones says the decision comes after the directive of President Rodrigo Duterte on Friday, June 5. Sabi ko sa inyo, walang vaccine, walang eskwela. Nandito, nandito, sayang nandito, but uh, uh, Secretary Briones is insisting that there should 
be an alternative there, and she has a very good program for that. For teleconferencing, meron ba siya? But if she has, or if we can afford it, we'll buy it, and she can proceed with the her uh, novel uh, idea of how he, she, the children can continue with their education. Teped also says preparations for blended or distance learning is underway, so classes can still start on August 24. A police doctor who worked at the Philippine Sports Arena quarantine facility died Saturday, May 30, after inhaling disinfectant while at work. He was 31. PNP spokesman Bernard Banak says Casey Gutierrez died of accidental inhalation of toxic disinfectant sprayed on him after attending to a patient. The disinfectant was apparently too concentrated to be sprayed directly, which caused Gutierrez to fall ill and eventually die. The incident raises concerns about the government's measures to protect its frontliners. As of Monday, June 8, there are now 22,474 confirmed coronavirus cases in the country. 331 are fresh cases for Monday, while 248 others are late. Death toll is at 1,011, and recoveries are currently 4,637. Experts from the University of the Philippines earlier warned coronavirus cases in the capital region can reach 24,000 by mid-June if quarantine restrictions were relaxed too early. But the health department says the increase in cases was mainly due to the quicker validation of more cases that were days or weeks old. The Metro Manila Police fires five officers who accompanied San Juan Mayor Francis Zamora to Baguio City Sunday, June 7. Zamora's group broke quarantine protocols and ignored Baguio City's strict border control and triage system. Zamora apologizes for the incident but blames the police officers who spoke with border officers when they entered the city. He said he was asleep when they passed through the border. In a statement Monday, June 8, Metro Manila Police Chief Debold Sina says the five law enforcers await charges. Sina says San Juan City Police Chief Jaime Santos remains in his post because he wasn't part of the convoy. Sina himself violated quarantine protocols last May 8 by allowing a surprise early morning serenade and birthday party his officers threw for him. He apologized for the incident but later insisted there was nothing wrong with the party, despite the violated quarantine protocols Sinas and 18 other cops are currently facing complaints for the violations.